Good morning. We're going to look in Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, at the last verses. And Jesus is talking about the Sabbath day and how it should be kept. Very interesting and very different. Let me read to you from verse 23 of Mark, chapter 2. One Sabbath day, Jesus was going through the cornfields. And as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some of the heads of grain. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Look! Why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath day? Jesus answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abatha the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. He also gave some to his companions. Then Jesus said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. First of all, Jesus is out for a Sunday walk. Now I know that the Sabbath was Saturday, but let's not get technical. It really doesn't matter. And by the way, if you were a Christian believer in Russia, the probability is you'd be on shift work and you'd get a different day off each week. I know that at one stage, and I don't know if this is still true, the First Baptist Church in Moscow had a service on every day because different people were off different days. So you couldn't be set. And I'm not sure that it matters about the Sabbath day. What does matter is that we have a day apart from our work, a day when we can be alone with our God, a day when we can worship. And my prayer is to you that you have that. Don't get hung up on the seventh day, the sixth day, or any other day. But be sure that you have a day. Because remember what it tells us in Genesis. On the seventh day, God rested from his creative work and he blessed the seventh day. It was fascinating, you know, in England during the war. When the war began and we needed armaments and weapons so badly, they gave us a seven-day week. They put all our factories onto seven days instead of six. Do you know what happened? Production went down. You can't go against the laws of God. God has made us for six days work. And when we do seven, immediately our productivity begins to collapse. Now, we need a day of rest, but we need a day of rest that involves the Lord our God. And this is exactly what's happening here. Now, as they walked through the grain fields, the disciples broke off some of the ears, rubbed them in their hands, and just ate the little bit of flour that was inside. Delightful little thing to do. Sure enough, suddenly the committee pop up over a hedge. I really think this is a hilarious scene, but that's my perverted sense of humor. Can't you see the committee suddenly appearing? I mean, you're only off for a Sunday afternoon stroll, and these wretched fellows are there again. The scribes and Pharisees are watching. Lord, do you see what they're doing? Well, what are they doing? Well, they're doing what's unlawful. What do you mean? It is unlawful to work on the Sabbath day. And by taking those ears of corn and rubbing them in their hands, the Pharisees considered that work. Do you see how hung up they were? Do you see what problems they had? Do you see their legalism? They were gummed up to the ears with all these things. It's a sad situation. And Jesus immediately responds. And he responds so beautifully as he always did. You see, there was an accusation here. And Jesus comes right back to deal with it. And he says, do you remember David? Now this was neat. First of all, the scribes and Pharisees knew the Old Testament backwards, forwards, inside out, up and down. And as they looked into the Old Testament in Jesus' day, the hero was David. Jesus knew that. So who does he use? David. He uses David as his illustration. He says, do you remember what happened when David and his companions were hungry? They went into the temple and they ate the showbread. Now that was absolutely unlawful. The only ones who could eat that were the priests. It was set aside for the priests. It belonged to the priests. But you see, David and his companions had a need. And because they had a need, the need overrode the sanctity of the showbread. So they ate it. Now that's the heart of God. If you have a man starving, you don't keep your consecrated bread from him. You let him use it. 
And that's exactly what happened to David. Now, the scribes and Pharisees would not criticize David. No way. He was fine. So Jesus simply used him as the illustration. What happened with David? Now, once again, the poor old scribes and Pharisees were back on the ropes. What could they say? If they said, well, it was all right for David to eat the showbread, Jesus would say, it's all right for my disciples to do this on the Sabbath day. And immediately they're caught. And bless their hearts, this happened to them again and again and again. Each time they came up against Jesus and started accusing them, each time he was the master of the situation, and he just put them back in their place. Now, he comes through with a very fascinating word. He not only deals with David, he goes on to say, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, I think we have to understand what's being said here. The Sabbath day was made for man. You remember what I said at the beginning? It is a day of rest, a day of recreation, a day when we can be alone with our God. One of the problems we face is the inroads that the world has made onto the Sunday. So that if we're not careful, we seem to lose what we had. I find it terribly annoying when you have youth things going on in your church and the school has begun to erode away the rest of the Sabbath. They're taking our children even on Sunday mornings to have a football practice or have a band practice. I think that's a problem. But here Jesus declares the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now, if you have to serve the Sabbath, you've got a problem. Why do I say that? Because I think it happened to me as a boy. When we were growing up, there were three boys in our home. I was the youngest. And my mother was widowed when I was eight. The two brothers, one was 12, one was 11. Now she had a difficult task. She had to bring up these three boys. But our Sundays were so rigid, it was pathetic. And looking back, and I know mum didn't realize this, she made the Sabbath day the holy part. It was not us. And we had to serve the Sabbath day. And I believe she was wrong, and I believe in later years she saw she was wrong. Now, I do not complain about going to church. But what did happen, and this was interesting, we went to church four times on a Sunday as teenagers. Mum went twice. We went to two Bible classes. We were in an organization that had an early morning Bible class at 10. We then went into the morning service at 11. 3 o'clock we had a young people's Bible class. And Sunday evening we had a service at 6.30. Now, if any of us wanted to miss one of those, my mother sat and cried. She sat and cried. Well, of course, a little bit of this was to get her own way and get us back into church. And my middle brother, who became very rebellious at one stage, would not go to the afternoon Bible study. Well, mother nearly had a conniption. Later on, when she was older, I sat down with her. And I said, now, just a minute. Did you ever realize you went to church twice on a Sunday? You made us go four times, and you were upset if we missed one of those sessions? And she sat there amazed. She never realized that we were going twice as much as she was. You see, we got into a state where we had to serve the Sunday. Now that's what Jesus says is wrong. The Sunday is there for man's benefit. Now it is there for God, yes, but it's there to benefit man. And if you've got into a legalism on the Sabbath day, on the Sunday, then you may have stepped out of line with the Lord. Let me read that to you again, the words of Jesus. The Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. It is there for our benefit, for our refreshment, for our recreation, for our worship, and it is marvelous to have a day set apart. Let's be careful that our government doesn't take that from us. But having said that, remember that it was not for man. Man was made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath fits in, fits in, fits in. And once you worship the Sabbath, then you come unstuck. I know the Seventh-day Adventists say it was Saturday, and that's fine, and you can do this Saturday if you like. You may have a problem to find your church open, but you understand. It is not the day, but it is certainly our attitude to it. Then Jesus says, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. He is Lord of everything, and he's Lord of your Sunday, and he's Lord of my Sunday. Let's be sure 
and this is probably the difficulty, let's be sure that what we do on the Sabbath day, on the Sunday, pleases Him. How do you spend it? I remember in those good old days in England, it was a day of indigestion. We got up and we had breakfast, we went off to that Bible class, and then on to morning service, then home to lunch, and lunch was the big meal of the day. Then at three o'clock you were off to Bible study, then you came home for afternoon tea, then you're off to the evening service. Man, it was busy. By Monday morning you're glad to get back to school to have a rest. And looking back on it, it wasn't all that good. No, I didn't get a complex, not that I know of, but you see, I realized, and I said to my wife, whatever we do with our sons, let them enjoy Sunday. Let's not make it a day that's a burden, a day when you're rushing here, rushing there, no time for anything, no time for family. That has a problem. Now, if that's your thing, I think that's just fine, and I'm not trying to condemn you, but I am trying to get balance. I think we have to be very careful that truly the Lord is the Lord of our Sunday. Now, He may want you to do something different than the thing you're doing. You've got to be careful of what we talked about yesterday. If you have a mindset already about Sunday, then you're not going to hear what the Lord says, and you're not going to do what He says. He may need you to visit a nursing home in the afternoon. Be open to that. Your church may have an evening service, and He wants you there. Be open to that. It's openness to the Holy Spirit, to His guidance, if you've really made Jesus Lord of your life. If you haven't, I guess it doesn't matter what you do. You're just going to do your own thing anyway. But if Jesus is Lord, be sure that He is Lord of your Sunday. Lord of your Sunday, not of mine. I deal with that, you deal with that. And you see, you can't accuse somebody else, because then you're sitting in judgment. You have to let the Spirit show them what they should be doing, just as He's showing you what you should be doing. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Man was not made to fit into some particular pattern, some particular form, some particular legalistic idea. He was made free to be free in Jesus Christ. And that's why Jesus as Lord can guide us exactly as to how to spend our Sundays. These scribes and Pharisees had got it all wrong. They had their mindset on the Sabbath day. But then again, some church people have their mindset on Sunday. And we need to hear what Jesus is saying to each one of us.